So last month, I opened an Etsy shop selling websites and other digital templates as a side hustle and made about $700 in revenue so far. Today, I'll show you how to build a website and sell it on Etsy, and I'll give you some helpful tools and resources in combination with AI to speed up your workflow. Timestamps below if you want to skip ahead. Now let's get right into it. So I build my websites with Showit, which is a drag and drop platform like Wix and Squarespace. Showit has three types of subscriptions, but the one I recommend is the Showit Plus Basic Blog one, because most people who buy website templates want a blog attached to them. And that's because blogs drive traffic to your website. All the words you type into a blog are picked up by Google search and they help rank your website higher in the search results. Now, the reason I chose Showit specifically was because you have much more creative freedom than with other builders. With with Wix and Squarespace, you're limited in placing your text and images into grid slots so that your website can scale correctly. Showit does this a bit differently. Instead of limiting your creative freedom, they allow you to place text and images wherever you like. However, in order to scale the website correctly to all devices, you have to design it in both mobile and desktop mode separately. And while yes, this doubles the amount of work, this way you can create websites that you simply can't with other builders. Signing up to Showit is straightforward. Just create your account and you can start your 14 day free trial. Now quick note, show its website builder works only in Google Chrome, which is one of the main disadvantages of the platform unfortunately. As you probably know, Chrome is notorious for eating up a lot of computer memory. However, during my personal use, I've never encountered any problems as the builder is actually well optimized for this browser. Okay, so let's take a look at the website builder. So once you're signed in to show it, you can start creating websites based on any of the hundreds of pre-made templates. These are useful because most of them already have all the necessary pages we would need. And for reference, a basic website should have four pages, a home page, an about page, a blog, and a contact page. So today we'll be starting from this maple photography template. After we click on it, we just go to start with this design. So this is the main interface. The middle part is where you do most of your work, add your text, images, change colors, and so on. As you can see, you have the mobile and desktop version side by side. Now let's look at the bottom, left, and right toolbars, starting with the bottom toolbar. Down below here, you can view your website in split mode, desktop, or mobile mode only. Here you have your rulers and guides, your zoom out, zoom reset, and zoom in options. To the right, you have the undo and redo buttons to correct any mistakes you might make during designing. Now let's look at the left toolbar. You can see it's split into two tabs, site and page. On the site tab, you have all the general settings related to the whole website, whereas the page tab has all the settings related to the current page you're on. So let's take this step by step. If we go to site settings, here you can change the name of your website, connect your domain, change the site language, you can set up your blog, add Google Analytics, and connect any social pages. Under design settings, site style, you're able to set up a color palette for your website and change the fonts for titles, headings, subheadings, and paragraphs. Under fonts, you have a list of currently available fonts on the right side here, but you can also add a font from Google's big catalog of fonts from here. If you want to add a completely custom font you may have purchased from sites like Creative Market, you can add the WOFF file. Keep in mind that you should have commercial rights to any font you use in this builder. Under media library, you can add the images you want to use on your website, and then you have all the pages from your website right here. You can add a new page, rename, duplicate, or delete existing ones. Next, we'll go to the page tab. Here you'll find all the sections on the current page you're on, which in our case right now is the home page. So to understand how settings work here, you have to know that a website consists of pages and those pages consist of canvases. And canvases are basically sections within a page where you add your text, images, and shapes. And if you take a look at the home page right here, you'll see the sections clearly separated by color or certain elements. On the left side here under home, you'll see the list of canvases and if we click on them you'll see all the elements listed under each canvas. Texts are marked with a T, graphics and images are marked with a box icon and icons like an arrow are marked with a smiley face. So let's go ahead and click inside the website itself. You can see if I click on one canvas in this page, it'll highlight it on the left side to let me know on which canvas I'm currently on. Now that we selected a canvas, we can modify some canvas settings in the right toolbar here. So there are mainly two settings we're interested in, initial height and canvas background. Under canvas, the initial height lengthens or shortens the current canvas you selected. Under canvas background, you can change the background or make it a simple color as well. If we click on an element within a 
a canvas such as this text, it will give you all the properties that you can change in the right toolbar again. Under text style, you can change the color, the opacity, the size, letter spacing, alignment, and so on. And you can position the text anywhere you want as long as you keep it within the current canvas. You can make the text clickable and you can lead it to pages, specific canvases, or links. Same goes if you click on an image. All properties will show up on the right side and you can swap out the image, resize it, make it clickable, and apply many other functions. If you like to add more elements to a canvas, you just go down here and add either a text, shape, or image from your media library. Alright, so now that you have a basic understanding of the builder, how would I advise getting started? So first of all, you need to look around and see what type of websites sell on Etsy. In my experience and having researched a ton of templates, I found that these were the most popular based on search volume and click-through rate. So let's say you go for photography websites. I would advise looking around on Etsy, checking the star seller shops, and seeing what what type of websites they offer. Bookmark two or three websites that you personally like and really have a look at what they are doing. What color palettes they use, the types of fonts, check the comments and reviews and see what buyers liked or didn't like after their purchase. Then you can attempt to recreate a website like that and show it or better yet a combination of the two or three you like the most. Now I'm not going to sugarcoat it. This requires work and patience but I'm pretty confident that with the tools nowadays people can build a website in just a couple of days and I'm gonna give you six of these free tools to speed up your work. The first one is on Splash which is a stock photography database. You can download all images you'd want to use on your website, they're completely free and you get full commercial rights. The second one is Canvas Color Palette Generator. Once you have an image that you know you'd want to use on your website, go to Canva, upload that image and it will give you all the color codes that appear in that image. You can take these codes, copy and paste them into show it under design settings and this gives you a very good starting point as you'll have a color palette for the website ready to go. The third tool I recommend is Image Color Picker. In case you find a color somewhere on the web that you like, just take a screenshot of it, upload it into this tool and it will give you a color code for that specific color. The fourth tool I recommend is Mid Journey. Let's say you want to launch a website template for restaurants and you want to fill it up with good looking images of food. Instead of browsing through hundreds of images on Unsplash, you could simply generate these using AI. This website tells you exactly how to generate photorealistic images of food and the results are simply mind blowing. I'm gonna link all the prompts down in the description. The fifth tool I recommend is a lip sum generator. This basically generates gibberish text you can use to fill up your paragraphs which buyers can then edit later once they purchase your template. The sixth tool I recommend is a font finder tool. Take a screenshot of a font you like, upload it to the tool and the AI will generate all the fonts that look similar to that one. You can then google the font, download it if it's free or purchase the commercial rights for it. Okay so let's say you created your website and you're prepared to upload it to your Etsy shop. How do you actually do that? So within the show it website builder go to site, site settings and click on share. If you click on share again here it will generate a share key. You're going to copy Copy this share key from here, paste it into a Word document and save it as a PDF. Once you have your shop open and add your listing, you will upload that PDF file with the share key. After a customer buys your template, they can take that share key and within the Show It website builder, go to their name down here at the bottom click add to library and they will be able to open and edit that template. If you'd like to see a step-by-step -step guide on how to open an Etsy shop, add listings and price your products, I've linked two of my videos down in the description where I talk about exactly that. Now let's address a few important bits of information. First of all, you can create and sell an unlimited amount of templates within the same Show It account and subscription. Whenever you're finished with a design and want to create a new one, just go to your name down here and click create a new design. All the websites Websites you create and edit are saved in here under view my site designs. Second, a potential customer would need to have a show it subscription to access your template. If your template has a blog, then the buyer would need to have at the very least the show it plus basic blog subscription. Third and the most important, you're not allowed to sell the pre-made templates you see on show it as they are. So that's it folks, I hope some of this information was useful and inspired you to start building your own websites. I personally enjoy designing templates so I do it whenever I have the time and I find it to be the best source of passive income. As always, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on new videos. All of you watching are amazing, wishing you a wonderful rest of the day or night and I'll catch you on the next one.